So let's look at why is the Fourier transform of a sum of delta functions also a sum of delta functions. And this is something that comes up in digital sampling and it's often counterintuitive and quite confusing. So let's, let's look at this. Here's the formula for the sum of delta functions in the time domain and here's the formula for its Fourier transform which is also a sum of delta functions but in the frequency domain. So let's just uh, draw out this, uh, this equation first. I always think it's a good idea to draw uh, equations. So this is a delta function. If, if n equals 0, it's a delta function at time equals 0. And then if n equals 1, it's a delta function shifted to capital T. Uh, and then uh, again for n equals 2, shifted to 2T and so on. Okay, and then for negative a's of n, it's shifted uh, or uh, in this direction here to minus capital T, minus capital 2T, and so on. So here's our infinite sum of delta functions, which is a, a whole lot of delta functions next to each other, separated by capital T. And the Fourier transform happens to be this. Now I'm not going to go into the equation as to why here, but let's look at the what it is when we plot it out. So at k equals 0, it's the same principle occurs. So at 0 frequency, there's a delta function uh, at uh, omega s frequency, the sampling frequency. If this is a, if we're going to do digital sampling, think about it like that. Then there's a delta function, uh, same at two uh, two omega s and so on, two omega s and so on, and same with negatives. Okay, so this is a really absolutely critical waveform when we're thinking of uh, sampling, and so it's important that we understand it. Okay, so why is it counterintuitive? Well, uh, so and the height of this is 2 pi uh, divided by capital T. Okay, and the height of these ones was 1. Okay, so why is it counterintuitive? Well, let's think of one delta function. So if we have one delta function, so on this graph here, we have just a single delta function rather than the summation, so just that one from the middle, <clears throat> then we know that the Fourier transform of this from the Fourier transform properties and, and the calculations, the Fourier transform of this we know is a constant. And this is why the result above is counterintuitive and often confusing for students. Okay, so here's, here's, here's a result that we know. A single delta function has a Fourier transform that is a constant. So the question is, we know the property of Fourier transforms that if you add up waveforms, then you also add up their Fourier transforms. So that's a linear property of Fourier transforms that we know about. So intuitively, you would think that if you have a, this delta function and this is the Fourier transform, intuitively you would think that the Fourier transform of this summation should be a lot of these flat functions all added up. Instead, it's a series of delta functions. So that's where the intuition often leaves students confused. So let's explore that and understand it. Well, it it is true, it's, so there's nothing uh, wrong with the um, knowledge that the Fourier transforms, if you add the signals, you can add their Fourier transforms. That still holds. So how can it be that that can hold at the same time as giving us a delta functions here instead of a whole lot of flat functions? Well, the important thing is we're forgetting to plot the phase. So when we plot, plot this function here and B flat, we're forgetting that there are two, it's a complex value, and we've only plotted the magnitude here. So this is the magnitude of x that we're plotting, uh, and there's a phase component as well. Now it happens to be that the phase component for a delta at zero, the phase component is zero. So we can sort of get away without plotting it. But if we don't plot it and forget about it, then we won't understand this result here, the sum of deltas. So to help us with that, let's think about another function, which is the delta function shifted to the right by capital T. So just a single delta function, so it's this one here out of our sum, single delta function, this one shifted to the right. So what do we get? Well, in the frequency domain, when we shift a function in the frequency domain, we get the same magnitude, but we change the phase. That's a property of Fourier transforms. So what it means is, sure enough, in the frequency domain, the magnitude of the Fourier transform is also still a constant, okay? But now we're going to draw out the phase and try to understand the phase. So the phase here, uh, we know that the phase is going to be a, uh, you're, you're multiplying the, the Fourier transform by e to the j omega, uh, negative, negative j omega uh, 
T, capital T, which is the phase. So that's the formula. So in that case, uh, it's a negative. So that means the phase is a straight line with a slope of capital T. So that's a slope of capital T. Okay, so let's look at what the addition of these two offset delta functions means in terms of real signals, now that we understand about the phase. So let's look at the circle, the phasor circle, uh, and try to understand on this where we've moved to with this slope of the phase. So let's look at the, a particular frequency. Maybe I'll pick this frequency here. Let's start with this one here. Uh, then what we can see is on the original waveform, uh, just the single delta at zero, then we've got a unit magnitude and zero phase. So on this diagram here of real and imaginary, that is a point here where there's a magnitude of one and zero phase, which means there's no imaginary component. And if you want to understand more about this, there's a video on the channel uh, that relates complex numbers to real signals. And in that video, uh, I make the point that we can uh, now see that this is the initial phase of a sinusoid. And as time goes on for that sinusoid, uh, this initial phase here uh, will move around this unit circle. And don't forget there's a positive frequency and a negative frequency. And the negative frequency is simply the same positive frequency but moving in the other direction around the circle. So as we move around the circle here, one moves in this direction, the other in this direction, the positive frequency here, the negative frequency here, and those two when they add together, the resultant phasor will cancel the imaginaries and you're just left with a real signal. And in that video, and I'll, I'll do it here as well, we can plot out that the what the trajectory of that is as time goes on. And I just want to do this to really make the point that we've got real signal. So as this point here, as the two move around the circle, as time goes on, so this is increasing time, this is our signal here, then this uh, effective, when you add those two phases, is going to be a real, resultant is a real that moves down this axis over to the other axis and then back again and so on. And that maps out uh, a cos waveform. Okay, so it's a cos waveform that gets mapped out. And again, there's a video on the channel with more information about that. Okay, so this is just from that delta function at this frequency. We're going to have a cos waveform with zero phase. Well, what about for this time shifted delta function? Well, it's going to have a phase shift, which is going to equal the frequency that we're looking at. Uh, let's call it omega prime, uh, times the uh, slope uh, on this triangle here. So it's going to be a phase offset of omega prime times t, negative omega prime times t. So where is that on this diagram? Where did that point move to for this time offsetted delta function? Well, it's come around this circle here in a negative direction by omega prime times capital T. So let's say it came around to here. Let's say that is omega prime times capital T. That's this phase here. Is We're looking at omega prime, just one arbitrary frequency just to start with, and then we're going to look at lots of other frequencies, but let's just look at this one frequency to start with. So if we pick that particular frequency, then for this time-shifted delta, it results in a dot here, a phasor here for the positive frequency part, and a phasor uh, up here which is the positive phase here, the positive phase for the negative omega prime frequency. And again, these two phases, when they are added together, which they are because it's all additional, when these add together, the imaginary parts cancel out because the positive imaginary part cancels the negative, and you're left with a phasor which is going to start on the real axis at a different voltage, a different amplitude compared to the original one which didn't have any phase shift. So here, what does that mean? Well, that just means simply as time goes on, you're going to move from these two points around the circle. And that means that we're going to map out this waveform here. So this waveform is the same as the original cos, because we're still at the same frequency, but it starts at a different phase.
And so that is exactly the phase shift that we're talking about from this linear phase shift that you get from having shifted in the time domain. So this is a different phase. You can see the phase shift here. Uh, this is the phase, this is how the phase shift happens. And I really always encourage people to think about real waveforms. This is a real waveform in the time domain. If you look on the side, you can see the real time domain waveform. Uh, and one of them's a cos wave, that's from this delta function here. And the other one's a cos wave with a phase shift. A phase, because of the time offset, results in a phase shift. And here you can see the phase shift. And that because that's how it relates to the phase or diagram. Okay, so that's for one particular frequency with one of these phase off, uh, one of these time offset deltas. Well, what about the fact we've got lots of time offset deltas? So let's think about that now. Okay, so this is uh, we, we're going to not just have one here, but we're going to have one that's going to be at twice this angle because the next one is offset by two times capital T. So the slope for that delta function will be twice this slope which means they will have moved twice as far around the unit circle. And then there'll be another one for three times around 3t, 4t, 5t. Each time this slope is increasing and we're adding them all up together. And that's where we need to see uh, if we can convince ourselves that in fact this results in all of these phases cancelling out and resulting in zero amplitude for any of the frequencies in here so that we are in fact going to get as an overall result a series of delta functions rather than a series of uh, these flat functions all adding up. Don't forget that's the intuition we're trying to understand here. Okay so let's look at some special cases for example. So I've picked a, an arbitrary omega prime here but let's pick a particular one. Uh, uh, let's, try, let's pick just to see what happens with if I've picked omega prime times t if I happen to pick that to equal pi on 2. So let's look at that particular value of omega prime just to start with. Then we're going to look at some others and of course we'll look at the general case. So in this case if we look at omega prime equal uh, times capital T equals pi on 2 then what, what would we have here? Well let's look at this phase or diagram and in this case we would have the original uh, points which come from the original non-shifted delta function. We would then have the points from the shifted delta function which is shifted by capital T and what would that be if omega prime times capital T equals pi on 2? Well those points here, this thing here would be we would be having omega prime times capital T equals pi on 2 so this is which would be minus pi on 2. Okay so for the, for the first shifted delta the contribution at this frequency would be minus pi on 2. Where's that? That's down here. Of course we've got the positive one as well, so that's points up here. And then we've got from the second shifted one would be twice that. Don't forget we said the second shifted one gives you a double slope, so the double slope is going to give you pi. And then as you keep going for the three time slope and the four time slope and the five time slope for each of these different delta functions, they're all going to be landing on either zero, pi on two, pi or negative pi on two, or whichever way around you go, there's going to land on only those four points. And notice that the phasors, when they add them all up, the phasors for these four all cancel out. Okay, so at this particular value of omega, all of these phases from all these different shifted delta functions at that frequency, all of those phases will cancel out. And therefore, you will get zero contribution to the Fourier transform at that frequency. So at the frequency where omega uh, prime t equals pi on 2, you'll get no contribution. So the Fourier transform will be zero at that point. Now let's look at some others and convince ourselves that other places have zero too and then we'll convince ourselves that all of them have zero except for the special case of omega s. So let's say omega capital T equal pi, where would those ones be for that frequency? So again we've got the same, it's the same sampling time, we haven't changed the sampling time, we're now just looking at a different frequency. So if omega prime times capital T equal pi, you'd have points here and you'd have the second slope from the second shifted one would be here and then the third one would be back to here again and you'd always have those two. Again, those phases will all cancel out. Um, if you have the very special case where omega prime 
uh, times uh, t, so if omega prime times t equal 2 pi for in this special case here, then what have we got? All of the points are being rotated from all the different angles, from all the different shifted delta functions, they all exactly land back on this point here. And in that case, you don't get cancellation, they all add up, and that's exactly what happens at this sampling time, because this is the definition of the sampling frequency. Don't forget up here, omega s, the sampling frequency, equals 2 pi divided by t, and that's what we have here. So in the case where you are at the sampling frequency or any integer multiple of the sampling frequency, you're going to have all these contribution from all these slopes, which come from all the different shifted deltas, are all going to land on the same phase or rotation, which means you're getting exactly the same adding up, no cancelling. And that's why you get the delta functions. And so the final thing is just to convince ourselves that the cancellation doesn't just happen at pi on 2 and pi, it happens for any value of omega except for this one. And let's just look at that case. Uh, and I might uh, uh, um, have to shift the, the screen down to here. Hopefully I can get that uh, still balanced there. Uh, okay, so in that case, let's look at uh, another phase or general phase or for a general frequency. Okay, so let's say a, a frequency that's not one of these special cases, but just a general, one of the general frequencies, any of the other frequencies between these delta functions. Okay, so for this case, you're going to have a shift that that's, comes a certain distance around the curve, and then that's from the first shifted delta, the second shifted delta, the third shifted delta, and so on. And these are going to appear around this circle, and if there's no particular value for them, then they're not going to land exactly back on that point there. They won't land on that point there. For any other arbitrary values of omega prime, uh, omega prime times t, uh, it does divide, uh, or divided by 2 pi, uh, so uh, sorry, an integer, let me say this one, so an integer times omega prime times t does not equal 2 pi. So for, for, this, for this general value of omega, for any other value of omega, where it's not an integer around the unit circle, then it's not going to land back on 2 pi. And that's the critical thing, because you've got an infinite number of delta functions. So don't forget there's an infinite number of delta functions, and so you're going to keep going around this unit circle, uh, and never exactly landing back on 2 pi, and it, because there's infinite numbers of them, they're going to Fill, fully fill in this circle as you go around because there's infinite of them. And so as you keep going round, as you keep going higher and higher for more and more shifted deltas, as higher and higher, more and more shift time offset shiftings, you're going to be filling in this circle all the way around. And because there's an infinite number of them, you're going to completely fill this circle, which means when you add up all the contributions, you add them all up, they will all cancel because they will be an even, evenly distributed around this circle and therefore they will all be cancelling. So for, let me say that again, for all other values of omega, so all the values of omega between 0 and omega s, for all those other values of omega, uh, you're going to get a complete cancellation uh, because as you as for, for whichever slope you happen to have for the frequency that you're looking at, it will not it, other than these two special cases here, it'll never be the case that you're landing back on 2 pi, which means you're continuing to go around, never landing over the same point twice, and fully filling in that circle. So that the phases, the contributions from all the different offset time instants, all the different delta offsets, all of those contributions will cancel when they're added together, which they, of course they are added together because it's a linear system. So hopefully that explains why there's zero contribution for all of the frequencies between zero and omega s, and then again between all of those other frequencies to two omega s, and so on. And explaining why they actually do add up at that sampling frequency omega s. So if you found this video helpful, uh, please give it a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Um, subscribe to the channel for more videos and uh, look at the web link in the information below for a full list of all the videos on the channel.